Something's got to. All right. So you're making homework your own thing. Uh, tomorrow's the quiz. The due date for the chapter one homework is tonight. Um, but you can turn it in late. But, but you want to try some from every section so you're ready for the quiz tomorrow. So you can either turn stuff in incomplete, but on time, or you can turn it in uh, a little late, but complete. Uh, I'll only let homework, uh, it's not the right word, but I'll only let homework punish you <laughs> if you have something turned in very late or if you have a lot of stuff turned in late. Are you with me? So don't leave entire sections undone before you take the quiz. That makes no sense, right? I always hate it when a student's like, I couldn't do the last five questions because I didn't do these sections. I'm like, what the hell sense does that make? All right. Anything else, guys? Any other questions? We'll Good go morning, back. Professor. I do Good have a question. Yes. Um, what is the latest we can turn in the homework today? Because I go to work from here. I think I officially made it. Let's see if it shows up here. Oh, uh, let's see. Where can you find? Let me become a student real quick. It's usually oh, here we go. Show it on the grade. It it? Look right here. Eleven fifty nine p.m. Uh, but are you you ready? You ready? You ready? Here we go. You ready? You can turn in section one a homework on the day of the final exam. Will you get full? Will you get full credit for it? No. Will you get more than zero credit for it? Yes. The most so, important thing for each of you is to do what you can to be ready for quizzes and tests. Okay, because I was I caught myself. Um, getting pencil happy. I, you know, remember I asked you if we can type out problems and then the light bulb didn't come on. Of course, I'm like sleepless, sleep deprived until I was like more than halfway done writing all these answers out. And it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, with all the laptops I have, I, did, I didn't think about it. So I was um, hoping, I'm gonna see how it scans, you know, the pencil because I use a regular pencil. I don't use those little pencils with the lead because I just don't like those. Sure. And um, so I don't know yeah. how clear it's going to come out for you. I might do a test and you can let me know. And if not, no. I'll just type out the answers. But isn't all the homework due tonight or just one A? Uh, a, B, C, D are due tonight, yes. Yes, okay, thank and you. And what does that mean? That means you could not turn any of those in yet if you're in a situation where you're not done and you want to finish before you turn it in. I just, I'm not sure how to make this. I hope everybody understands what I'm saying. I'm going to be like, turn it in on the day, on the time, turn them all in tonight, turn them all in. Brah. And you're going to be like, I'm going to do as much as I can to be ready for myself. You're going to deal with it, Jeff. Or, I mean, that's the way, that's the way college is, period. That's the way I did freaking college, right? Because <laughs> I had to. Ain't no way in hell I was going to finish all the homework when I was working three jobs. Holy shit. But we won't <laughs> give full credit. Yeah, of course. Yep. So it, it's a balancing act. Right? What is the heaviest weighted stuff in this course? The quizzes and the tests. Right? What is homework primarily for? Getting you ready for quizzes and tests. Are you with me? So if you, like I said earlier, the homework will only hurt you if you turn something in very late or if you turn a lot of stuff in late. Yes? So if you get a section almost done, turn it in. I'll probably say finish on it and you can finish it whenever you get time. Does, does, is anybody not understanding what I'm saying? Let me see, I got a chat coming in, what's happening? How many points are we docked when it's turning late? Like I said, it depends on how much you turn in late and how late it is. Okay. I have one last question. Sure, sure. Can we, um, I would, I have a few questions and I noticed tutoring is up, is over, is just till three o'clock and I, the soonest I can get home is 3.30. So is there any way I can meet with you over Zoom to go over a few problems? Yeah, like I said, the first day. Right. 
Okay. Just send me a few times that okay. you would have time to meet and I can pick one or two and when I have time also. Okay, so that's for um, everybody. I'll, I'll, I'll discuss it with you after class and to not take everybody's um, so we can set a time this sure, afternoon. Sure, sure. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, in fact, I mean, if enough of you guys have time later, if you can't make it to the tutors, has anybody tried the tutors out yet? Is anybody thinking about it? You're all like, I don't know, dude. Um, we've got it set up pretty good. I mean, this is a drop-in thing. You don't need any uh, appointments. Um, anyway, all right. Anything else, guys? Is there any way they can have tutors like at night and not just, you know, that's a school thing, uh, right? There is a way, there is a way. If, if you get Ooh. the state to give us enough money, <laughs> Uh, we actually had to fight the math, the, actually the entire, you know, a few other departments joined with us because they need math tutors also for things like chemistry and physics. Uh, we had to fight for this. We had to fight for this. They didn't want us to have any tutoring this intercession. They were like, there's not that many students and the teachers can all take care of them. I mean, you guys are probably, I mean, some of you guys are like, I don't want to hear, listen to this guy more than I have to already. Shit, I need somebody else, dear God. So, I mean, anyway, anyway, you don't have to know all that. I mean, uh, we didn't do this for any other reason than this is all we have the budget for. That's the only reason. If we had a bigger budget, we'd have more hours. Okay. Well, you know, but something that does help is the Zoom or being able to record. I haven't accessed them but I'm hoping to have time to just go over the videos yeah, to review yeah. them with my, because my the notes I take are so helpful. That in conjunction with the book. And I can imagine if I go back and see the Zoom, because, um, you know, t there have been times where I felt, oh my gosh, like last night, it's like, should I just drop this class now? But then I thought, no, no, no. I went to the book. I went to my notes, because there, there are things that I'm writing in my notes that are not in the book and vice versa. So, you know, there are, you know, the, a few yeah. pros yeah so i always like to say a class is teacher plus book <laughs> plus outside resources right so uh i always hated i'm sure you guys have had teachers that basically were walking books and if you asked the question they would say well just read it in section one three and you're like i'm asking you can you can you sell me a different way so yeah i do like to try to add on top or augment the book obviously uh, so that I have a purpose for existing. Um, okay. Yes. And don't forget the videos are up there the, of the lectures. Uh, you can put me on one and a half times speed, or you can put me on 0.5 speed and listen to me drunk. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, you can skip ahead anyway. Anyway, so that's a good option. Um, anything else guys, anything from homework or anything from technical issues or Yes, how about homework? Um, yes. When are the next assignments due? I see the sixth and the seventh right here on the syllabus. Yeah, I still have to build, uh, I think I built, I still have to build the turn in chapter two homework. So I haven't put that in yet. And, and those okay. due dates are gonna be related to that quiz day, so. But tomorrow is the quiz, Thursday. Tomorrow's the quiz. There's Tomorrow's a quiz for chapter one. And then um, chapter two, we still don't know when A, 2A through C are due, right? Like I said, it's going to be based on, you know, when the quiz is, right? Yes. Yeah. I just haven't put them okay. in Canvas yet, but yeah. Okay, yeah. great. So Thank this you. weekend, you know, a lot of us are probably weekend warriors where you're like, the weekend is the only time I have time for shit. So this weekend is the time to finish up chapter one and to get ahead on chapter two. That's exactly what I was, that's exactly yeah, what yeah. I was asking. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. so it'll be a math month weekend. Yeah, this is basically, if you oh, haven't yeah. decided to give your life over to math this month, you're not doing it right. Well, uh, I already told my boys, you know, that's how it is. And I think that's the only way like for me to survive in this class is, okay. you know, to be able to be on the book, um, yes. to read the book chapter before you go over it. Yes, okay. All right, let's see. So I'm assuming the homework is good. If nobody has questions from the homework problems. Okay, all right. Uh, I wanna do um, some examples from what we did yesterday. I think there's, there's one thing I need to finish up in chapter one. 
Um, so the last thing we did was section 1D. Uh, let me see here. And that was where we can set up a Venn diagram that represents premises and then see if it leads to the conclusion they give. And if it does, what does that mean? So let me say this again. Let me say this again. If the premises of an argument lead to the conclusion necessarily, what can I say about that argument? That it's valid? Val it's valid. Yes. It's valid. What if all the premises are also true? It's valid and the premises are true. Then the statement is true. Then the conclusion is true and we call the argument what? So valid, valid means the structure is good. All the premises do lead to the conclusion necessarily. What's the word I use if all the premises are true? Also. True? No. True, I, I, valid. I being of blank mind and body. Sound. Your, oh, Sound. All right, I like it. So I was gonna, I was like, should I do charades? Sounds like, no. Um, is everybody with me? You guys with me? That kind of, remember, the thing about arguments is you can analyze it from a standpoint of, is the argument structured well? Like, do the premises actually lead to the conclusion? That's a structure question. That's valid or invalid. And then is the conclusion true? Is if the premises are all true, and if that's the case, then it's a sound argument. And these are just the words we've decided to use to represent those situations. But it kind of makes sense. I've been trying to tell you there's two things, right? Is it is it structurally good? Valid. And is the is the conclusion true? Sound. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. Then you got this other thing that I don't think I talked about yet. And it's the strength of the argument. So let me let me find this example for you. Let me see. Bum, 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 bum. What section is this? Oh man, I should have just got a physical copy of the book, but I didn't. Too bad for Jeff. I really hate having to look it up. All right, here we go. Oh, uh, Jeebus. All right, here we go. All right. Look at this argument here. Birds fly into the air, but eventually come back down. People who jump into the air fall back down. Rocks thrown into the air come back down. Balls thrown into the air come back down. Conclusion, what goes up must come down. False, not sound. Yeah, why? Well, are any of the premises false? No, they're strong. And you can kind of argue about the last one possibly, but I mean, it depends on how hard you throw it, right? So this is a little bit weird, but you might say that this is a valid argument, but it's not uh, strong. So the strength of an argument, you, you ready? you ready? The strength of an argument is how well the premises lead to the conclusion. So what's wrong with this argument? Why, why does it seem like it makes sense? In fact, guys, for the longest time, this argument was considered completely true and sound, right? And then what did we figure out? Did we figure anything out? Oh, I love it. Is there any, oh shit, are there any moon landing deniers out there? <laughs> if there are, maybe just keep it to yourself. I don't wanna cry this early. I'll get all tears on my notes, that'd be terrible. You guys all right out there? Does a rocket have to come back? No, no, of course not. So that conclusion is false. We know it now. We just didn't have enough pieces of evidence before. So that one, you can kind of argue that it's a weak argument because the premises don't completely lead to the conclusion. All right. What about argument two here? Is argument two valid? Yes. Yes, it is. Totally. Yes. Right. If all politicians are married and Senator Harris is a politician, then Senator Harris is married. Is it sound? Mm, not necessarily. Not necessarily. What do you mean? 
Um, not necessarily all politicians are married. Yes, exactly. Premise one is is probably false. I mean, they say all politicians, so I'm saying that doesn't say anything about the U.S., right? So uh, I don't think all politicians in the U.S. are married. I'd have to look it up, but I don't think it's true. All right, all right, all right. I love you guys. I've just got a few faces to look at. So I'm always, I always, when I'm in a classroom, I can look around and go, what percentage look completely lost? But here I've got just like four faces to look at. All right. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And we talked about inductive and deductive. So the thing I didn't talk about yet, let me stop sharing. All right. I know my mama told me to share, but too bad. Um, and this hopefully kind of makes sense. Let me turn this bad boy off. Yay. I know, I'm coming closer, hold on. Whoa. All right, you probably see why we call this what we do. This is a, uh, I can't remember exactly what this book calls it. This is a chain, could be called a conditional chain. I don't know, uh, if P, then Q, if Q, then S. I don't know why I skipped R, too bad. I've used this symbol before. I don't know, I don't think the book uses this, but this is how you kind of say therefore. Is it really important? Not really, but I kind of do this without thinking. So I think I did that before. I see this and I read the word therefore because I'm weird, right? This is just another language. Therefore, if P, then S. What do you guys think? Is that a valid argument? What do you guys think? If P happens, what uh, definitely yes. happens? Yeah, if P happens, then Q definitely happens. If Q happens, then S definitely happens. And again, I'm not saying that these statements are true. I'm saying that's what the statements say. So if P happens, Q definitely happens. If Q happens, S definitely happens. So if P happens, is there any way S is not going to happen? No, given these premises, that does make sense. And of course, then we can say, is this true or not? Is it, is it sound? Depending on if these things are true. I like it. Now, real quick, if one of these things was false, is this false? Yes. No. I love you guys so much. Uh, uh, let me see. Can I make something up real quick? Um, yeah, all right. If uh, I eat too much, then um, I can fly. If I can fly, then I will put on weight. Therefore, if I eat too much, then I will put on weight. Is the conclusion true? Do we know the conclusion is true? Don't come at me with, well, you can also exercise. No, if I eat too much, I will put on weight. Are either of these true? If I eat too much, then I can fly. No, no right? If I can fly, then I will put on. Now, this is a funny one. I like this one. If I can fly, then I will put on weight. Is this true? Also, no. no. So this is a little tricky. Please, dear God, please stay with me. Please stay with me. Please stay with me. I'm, I'm combining a few things here. This is kind of funny. Is it true that I can fly? No. 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 Then anything, and it's true. I don't know if you guys remember. What's the only time a conditional is false? Is if I have a true statement implying a false statement. Do you guys remember that? This is a little bit of a technical detail. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that about? True statement, false statement. Remember what, what we did yesterday? We uh, 
we created the truth table for a conditional and the only time it's false is if true implies false you guys remember that we talked about it that's the only time i broke the contract so this statement right here is true because if i can fly then anything right we talked about that yesterday and again, I know it's kind of like a little detail and a bigger idea. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I just wanted to bring that back up. The important thing here is this is false. Does that say anything about the truth or falseness of this thing? No. So this is what I said yesterday. If you have a conclusion that is true, but your argument is either not valid or not sound, that's so frustrating, especially if you're in a court trying to prove something, right? You know this is true, but you didn't put your case together well, or one of your premises isn't right. Then they've got to throw it out. Do you guys, that's so frustrating. But again, just because one of these things or all of them are false, doesn't say a damn thing about this. All right, all right, all right, all right. Isn't logic fun, guys? <laughs> I'm really oh i love you guys i love it i can see danielle's expression captures i think how everybody feels please let this make sense i can say whatever bullshit i want to here cut and i i could just say bullshit 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 and then write a true thing just because i put bullshit does that make this bullshit no of course not of course not oh, yeah. but this is all about trying to convince someone else right so even if your conclusion is true but the whole argument is not sound it can still be true i like it and how do we know that this conclusion is true do we know this conclusion is true from the argument no but they've convinced you of the bs all right now listen listen be careful don't take the wrong uh lesson for this if the argument was all i knew would this have to be true no because that's not true so this argument's not sound. If the argument was all I knew, I'd go, that's bullshit. Oh, okay. so I can't trust okay. that, right? So yeah. I couldn't trust this, even though we know more than the argument, don't we? So if you are in a court case and you're the lawyer and you rest your case and then you go, oh shit, I forgot to give this piece of evidence or something. So then it's not convincing to the jury, even though th what you're trying to prove is true, you'd left something out or you said something wrong or something. Are you, I don't know, that's, I've gone on too long with this. Okay, okay. So. So I can have a ridiculous statement like, uh, if I win the Olympics, then my hair will grow and it still falls under true because the second statement is the second uh, portion is true, even though the first. Yeah, if the first piece is false. And, and this is again, uh, let me see if I can. Do you guys remember that these have the same truth value? We talked about these yesterday. In Q, uh, if P, then Q, and if not P, then not. Or if not, if you, then not, not you, then not me. So if you make an A, then I will buy you a car. <clears throat> so if I don't buy you a car, then you must not have made an A. Does everybody remember that? Do you remember that? Okay. Now. Yeah. If I have a situation where, um, let's say, if I can fly, then I... Um, I'm a math teacher, right? What do you get when you, what do you get if you write? So that's this, what does this look like? Then can you write that statement for me? If this is, if P then Q, what does this look like in, in English? If I'm not a math teacher, I can't fly.
This is laziness, by the way. <laughs> Somebody out there is like, oh my God, this guy can't spell. What's he doing? All right. If I'm not a math teacher, then I can't fly. Now look at that. If I'm not a math teacher, then I can't fly. Is that true? Yeah. All right, all right. Which means this is true. If I can fly, then I'm a math teacher. In fact, if I can fly, then I am whatever the shit I want to put over there. Uh, let me see. Maybe this would be even better. If I can fly, then I am a ninja. Okay. So if I am not a ninja, then I can't fly. Isn't this true? This is true. So this must be true. If I can fly, then anything, right? Okay, maybe, maybe. All right, we're getting a little bit in the weeds here and, and it's partially my fault. But I, that's why I like sticking with the idea of a contract. Nikki, what's up? I have to go back to the last part before I can go on to this part. So I sure. drew this, if if this makes sense, then I think I got the last part. Can I show right. it up? Sure, let me highlight you so I can see you better. Uh, hold on, how do I do that? I, I don't know if I worded it exactly right, but. All right, hold it right there. If I eat too much, I can fly. Uh, true, false, I like it, that's false. If I can fly, oh, the problem with the next one is the first thing is false, right? I can't fly. Oh yeah. The only mistake you made. Yeah. But it's still true at the end because false implies okay. true is good. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I don't know. Does anybody see that and think it would help them? If you want me to write it up on the board? I don't, I don't know. You know what? I really like that. All right. So Nikki just showed. That was very helpful, Nikki. Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, this is what I mean. I'll, I'll, I'll steal whatever ideas anybody else had. So I'm sorry. I can't remember the situations now. Oh yeah. If I eat too much, Then uh, I forgot what was it. Then I can fly, right? Is that how it went? Somebody yeah. help yeah. me. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And if I can fly, then you gain weight. Then I gain weight. So this is uh, if I eat too much. Now the funny thing is, you said this is true, so you're just assuming I'm just eat too much. I understand. Uh, then I can fly, that's false. So true implies false is false. If I can fly, that's false. Then I gain weight. And unfortunately, I think I have gained weight, so that's true, sure, whatever. So this is true. But this, this, this statement, this first premise is false. If I eat too much, then I can fly. That is, that is false. Uh, so this is not a sound argument. If I eat too much, holy crap, Jeff, then I can, then I gain weight. This is valid. This is a valid argument. Check. Because this and this lead to this. Bam, it's valid. Is it sound? No, not sound because this is false. Does this say anything about the truth of this? No. So if an argument is valid, now listen, 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 listen. You're all like, good Lord, Jeff, third day in, you're like, oh God. If an argument is valid and sound, what does that mean about the conclusion? That is true. Beautiful. That is the only time you can say anything definitive about the conclusion. Does that, in any other situation, if it's invalid but sound, or if it's valid but not sound, any other situation, you cannot say shit about the conclusion. You don't know. You do not know. That might be the best way to think about this. Could you give us an example of an argument that was both valid and sound? That would lead to a oh sure 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 um 
me see. I mean, I can make a really silly one, like all humans must eat. Have any guys ever heard, I think, are they called breatharians or something stupid? You know, there are people that think you only need air and you can live. Yeah, I've heard of that. Okay. Pretty silly. That really well, exists. I've never even heard that word. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine there aren't it's those like people for long. long. All right. I'm sorry. I keep derailing us. I'm, I'm the worst distraction in this class. I'm sorry. So there are people like that. And there's an intersection with the flat earthers, but not every flat earther thinks you just need air. But uh, all humans must eat. Jeff is a human. Therefore, Jeff must eat. All right, that's a very simple example. Is this valid? Well, all humans must eat. Is that cool? All humans must eat. Jeff is a human. Therefore, Jeff must eat. Bam, you could do it visually. You can see that this is a valid argument. Is this a sound argument? Now, I'm just waiting for some of you guys to be like, is this, is this true? Yes. I'm sorry, what's in the little circle? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I should make The this. big circle is must eat. Yeah, so remember all humans, Yes. every single little human Okay, humans okay. must eat. Yeah. So if you draw it the wrong way around, does this human have to eat? No. So that can't be the right way to draw it. So whenever you draw a Venn diagram, just take a second and make sure it represents what you actually have. Just, just stop and go, oh shit, that's wrong. Okay, let me do it the other way. Not a big deal, right? Jeff is a human. So there I am right there. Jeff. Therefore, I must eat. Yeah. So this is both valid. This is true. This is true. Therefore, it is sound. Thus, what can I say about the conclusion? The conclusion is true. True. Sound. True. The conclusion is true. So the argument is valid because this and this lead to this necessarily. The argument is sound because the premises are true. And that is the only time I can say something definitive about the conclusion. The conclusion in this case must be true. So your, your argument has to be valid, well, well structured, correctly structured, and it has to be uh, sound in order for the conclusion to be true. Which is, again, why people, politicians, lawyers are really good at saying things that sound true. You make a chain of things that sound true, and then people buy into your conclusion. And then it's the other side that has to poke holes in these things. Do you guys understand? You start trying to show how, all right, your argument's valid, but this is not quite true. This you got to show this, this thing, uh, so it's not sound. Do you, do you guys follow what I'm saying? If anybody watches a lot of court case kind of TV, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is what you do. Ian, I'm sorry. Did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say yes to make sure that you knew I was engaged. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ian. I appreciate that. A whole lot of, uh, I'm sorry. If you can't turn your camera on, that's fine. I don't want to make you feel bad if you can't. But if you can, it'd be great um, for anybody else. Or, or do like Ian and just chime in sometimes. All right, guys. All right, guys. So the new thing, this is not the new thing. This, this is actually an old thing. This is uh, the premises, draw them, see if this must be true from what you've drawn. That's chapter 1D. That's the heart of, of section 1D. The new thing that we didn't talk about was that idea of a chain of conditionals. So let me see if you guys, so if I, um, if uh, dogs bark, then penguins fly. 
if um, if dogs eat cheese, then penguins fly. Therefore, a penguin. Uh, I'm sorry. If dogs bark, dogs eat cheese. Okay. Hopefully, that's easy to see. Is this is this valid? No. 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 Where's the? And I'm hoping this is kind of obvious. You guys can see. It's like SpongeBob. Uh, I missed that. Uh, if dogs bark, then penguins fly. Right? That's P, that's Q. So what am I going to call this guy? Somebody give me, that's a new idea, right? So what's, if dogs eat cheese, what letter do you want to give that? R. R. That's crazy. And then what's penguins fly? Do I already have a letter for that? Q. All right, Q. I like it. So is there a chain, P to Q to, oh shit, the chain is broken. This is written the wrong way around, right? Yeah. I like it. So this is kind of, the correct way for this would be this, this, this. And you can see it if you write it in one thing, P to Q to Q to R, P to Q to R. So P implies R. Okay, okay. It's not that much to that. And see why we call it a chain because we're not very creative and we're like, it's a chain. That's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was the last part of section 1D. That's the last thing we needed to do in section 1D, if I remember correctly, which is a big if. Yes. Okay. I do want to. Do one more thing here. Let me see. I want to show you something interesting. Um, I'm going to erase all this stuff about cheese and flying penguins. Let's see. There we go. All right. Um, can you guys tell me here? I created something earlier. I think I remember what it was. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Real quick, let's do a, a little warm up thing. Can somebody tell me what the next number is? Eleven. Ten. Yeah. Why? Why ten? It's a three. Oh, right. Isn't that what yeah. Just keep adding three. I'm not sure. How'd you get eleven? I don't know. Did you just? Is there a different? There might be actually, no. my point. No, I don't know. I just thought it felt right. But no, the three plus three plus three looks good. That's all good, Reggie. Don't worry. I appreciate you got to come at me with an answer. You never know. Um, what about this one? What was it, Jeff? Yeah. Sixteen. I understand, but no, right? It's increasing. Okay, 20. Oh, that's interesting. How do you get 20? Well, because the first one is adding four, the second one's adding six, the next one would be adding eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is plus four, plus uh, six, plus eight. So then you get 20, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's not what I was thinking, so you're wrong. Ah, ha, ha, ha. No, all right, all right. No, I don't want to make you feel bad. My, the point I'm trying to make is, can somebody tell me what kind of reasoning we're trying to use here? What's the only kind of reasoning we could possibly use here? I don't know if you guys remember. What two kinds of reasoning are there? Inductive and deductive? Exactly, right? Inductive and deductive. Inductive is inflate. You take specific examples and you try to make a generalization out of it. The problem with that, of course, is if I don't have enough examples, I might make the wrong general conclusion. If I gave you one more number in my list, then you'll see what's happening, right? Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, maybe you will. Uh, the next number is going to be a little 
rough for me. Let me see. Eight forty. I think it's eight sixty four. Is that right? Oh shit. Does anyone see what's happening? No. Yeah. So that's right. So I start with two six. What's two times six? Twelve. Twelve. And what's six times twelve? Seventy-two. And what's twelve times seventy-two? Mm -hmm. One hundred sixty-four. Yeah. So that's another way you can create a sequence. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Do not feel at all bad. In fact, the two six twelve twenty is beautiful. That is beautiful. If I only gave you these numbers and I meant this, but you put this, you get all the points. Do you understand? Because I didn't give you enough pieces of information to get whatever I was thinking about. So there were multiple ways to do this sequence. In fact, there's more than these two ways. Or maybe, and you're all like, God damn, Jeff, today, you are just really freaking us out. Okay, I'm sorry. This kind of leads to this famous, there is a famous sequence. You ready? There's a famous sequence. Fibonacci. Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence. We're actually going to talk about this later this semester, but I figure I'll just give it to you now. What's the what's the idea of the sequence? It's adding. Yeah, one plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Have you guys ever used um, note cards? Right, if you're making like uh, flashcards and stuff, you guys would yeah. be. What size are the note cards? Five by eight. Five by three, or eight by five, maybe. The thing now, real quick, we're going to talk about Fibonacci later this semester. But the sequence is related to the sequence is related to aesthetically pleasing ratios of things. So the sizes of the note cards, the size of your TV, the size of a billboard, the size of the movie screen. Uh, it's also related to aesthetically pleasing frequencies of music. They would be cre constructed using frequencies that are from this uh, ratio of frequencies from this sequence. Holy shit, chef. Oh, Nikki's got a good, yeah, rule of thirds comes into play. All right, so we're, well, there's a section coming up, but I figured I'd throw that at you right now, the Fibonacci sequence. Okay. Somebody keeps there. Okay. Um, okay. So that's it for chapter one. That closes the door on chapter one, at least lecture time. Uh, we're going to get into chapter two a little bit. We'll take a break. Um, okay. So the thing about chapter two is uh, these are not necessarily going to be uh, word problems, right? These are just general everyday life situations where we have to figure something out. Um, so they come up with this idea about how to analyze uh, problems in everyday life using mathematics. Uh, Right, they get, they use this U-S-E, understand the situation. Holy crap, Jeff. Solve the problem. And explain your solution. So obviously, um, do you guys remember the like word problems where you had a train goes north at 70 miles an hour and another train goes south at 80 miles an hour? How long until they crash into each other? And stuff? Those beautiful, everybody loves those. That's your favorite part of math. Okay. 
Uh, that's not what this is about. This is more given a situation, do I multiply, do I divide, do I add these things up? Is there any numbers that aren't important, right? That doesn't really affect the problem. So we're gonna have to do some of these out of the book. Let me see, did I wanna, yeah, okay. Let's look at an example from the book. And again, don't freak out. This is not pure word problems. And you're like, I'll freak out if I want to. Thank you very much. All right. All right, let's see, where are you? Bam, okay, where are you guys at? There you are. Oh, let's see what's going on. Did I go too far? No, I didn't go far enough. I like how I don't include this critical thinking in everyday life. Ah, that's not important. Um, <laughs> it's just the way it is. There we go. Get out of there. So much stuff. There we go, understand, solve, explain, and they kind of go through it. And it, it's just to give you, it, it's just it, it, it's just a framework to kind of hang stuff on. Um, so for example, how far is a light year? So I love this question because what does a, does anyone know what a light year means? Distance. Distance what? Of light traveled in space. Over the course of a? human year or solar okay. year i love it. humor yeah i like that of your human year okay we're all humans i think i'm not i might um so let me see i can't do that can i oh all right so there's a couple things we have to know then so there might be a few situations where you have to google some stuff right so uh how fast does light travel? Well, they tell you over here, it's 300,000 kilometers per second. Oh, shit. So we are going to talk about metric system here in a bit. But I'm almost certain you guys know kilometer. Um, 300,000 kilometers per second. Right. Blah, 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 blah. So if I want to know how far something is traveling, and I know it's speed, and I, I know it's the time that I'm letting it travel, what formula relates those things? So if I know the speed that it's going at, the time that it's traveling for, and I Distance want to- times right times time. Careful. Distance, not distance times right times time. So just distance times time? No, 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 no. Yeah, an equation. It's got to be an equation. So distance equals rate times time. And the beautiful thing about that is it's the dirt equation. D equals RT. So back here, you can see right here, distance equals speed times time. And you guys, you guys, you guys all do this one. Uh, I don't know how much you guys are in a car nowadays, but if you're going 50 mile an hour because of traffic and you're like, oh man, where am I gonna be in a couple hours? I'm gonna be 50 times two, 100 miles, right? If that, if that continues, if the, if the speed continues. And sometimes 50 is, is like really good in California. We all know this. Um, okay, maybe. Therefore, I know the distance must be the speed that light travels at times a year. Now, this problem is, is a really good one to start with because we have metric that we're going to talk about. We have what's wrong with the speed being 300,000 kilometers per second and I'm traveling for a year. What's, what's the problem there computationally? Is it two different measurements of time? Yes, your units are not the same. So what else is gonna be in this chapter is gonna be conversions. How do I convert from one unit to another, right? Uh, let's see, so, so let's try this, let's try this. Let me stop sharing.
so you don't see what's happening in the book. You can have the book. You can look at it. Oh, okay. Um, so we know that tri light travels 300,000 kilometers per second, roughly. Right? It's not exactly this. Uh, we know we're going. So that's the rate at which it's traveling. I know I'm going to let one year go by. And I know I want to know what the distance is. And this is the formula D equals RT dirt. Oh shit. You can yell at me when I'm doing this. <laughs> there we go. So we can't see all that shit. All right. So what's the very first thing I should probably do to work towards getting this distance? Does everybody understand the, the point that was just brought up about the units? Excuse me, Professor. I need to ask, it's a, it's a very um, dumb question. What does R stand for? Oh, R is rate. Okay. And the reason it's there instead of putting like an S for speed uh -huh. is because speed is one certain kind of rate. So why does this, why does this formula make sense? If, for example, stay with me, if I could type, it, it, oh, it, sure. If I could type 80 words a minute, that's the rate at which I type, right? A rate is, the word rate is related to the word ratio. So rate is something per something. So if I could type 80 words a minute and you give me five minutes, how many words should I be able to type? 80 words a minute and you give me five minutes. Oh, uh, 400. 400. You did the rate, 80 words per minute, times the time, five minutes. And why does that really, really make sense? 80 words per minute times five minutes. What happens to minutes? What happens to these units? Cancel. They cancel. So whatever I'm going to end up with is going to be in the units of words. Now, in that case, it's not a distance. It's actually an, an amount, but don't worry. Okay, so this distance is like an amount of, uh, amount traveled, right? So this would be an amount of words. Okay, so that's the more general idea behind this formula. It's an amount is the rate of change times time. Now, why, why does this work better than this? Because this is minutes and this is per minute. This is years. This is per second. Oh, shit. So how can I figure out? In fact, what do I want to figure out? Before I can throw stuff into the formula, what do I need to figure out? The forms of measurement that you're going to use for each one. Sure. So what do you think I'm going to use for time? How many seconds are in a year? Beautiful. I want to figure out. How many, one year is how many seconds? I like it. I actually know an approximation for it. I know there's approximately pi times 10 to the seventh seconds in a year. What the shit, Jeff? Okay, sorry, so, so sorry. <laughs> Let me just leave that on the side. We're going to compare it to the answer we get. I don't know if you guys remember what times 10 to the seventh means. We'll talk about that a little bit too, because that comes up in this chapter also. So let's try to set this up. So what I need to do now is a conversion from years to seconds. So whenever you do a conversion, you write down where you're starting. And then you figure out the path you're going to take. How will I get from years to seconds? What's the what's in the middle? I can go from years to what? Months. To well, months will be hard because every month doesn't have the same number of days. And then you can argue about leap years. Let's just say this is not a leap year, okay? Day. Years to days. From days to hours. Hours. From hours to seconds. Yeah, you could go hours to seconds. I don't know if you guys are all cool. Some of you guys might have to go hours to minutes, minutes to seconds. But we'll see. 
All right. All right, let me stop for a minute. Conversions always work like this. The step that students skip that give them the most problems in any conversion problem is this step right here. What path will you take to get from where you are to where you want to be? If you skip this step, it's going to be really easy to make a mistake down here. Now, let me ask you this. I want this to make all the sense in the world. Some of you guys have done this before. Anybody ever taken chemistry ever in your whole life? Chemistry? Do you remember converting moles to grams and shit, right? No, no, <laughs> you're all like, I remember taking chemistry. That's where it stops. Okay, okay. Um, I want this to make sense. The very first step I want to take is go from years to days. So I, do I want years to still be here? I want to go from years to days. Do I want years to still be there? No. So where am I going to put the years on the top or the bottom? Bottom. Bottom. So I can go from years to days. Right. See how the years cancel. I've taken the first step. Now I can fill in the numbers. How many days in a year? 365. 365. Okay. So let's see if you guys can keep going. You can uh, actually let me do one more step so you can see how this works. Where do I now? I'm in days now. Do I want days? No, I want seconds at the end. So I want to kill days. So where am I going to put days? The bottom. The bottom. From days, I can go to hours. And then you fill in the correct thing. One day, 24 hours. Keep going. Let's see if I have enough room. We're going to find out. Maybe we can start writing smaller. Then you put hours in the bottom. Yeah, yeah. The next Keep one. going yourself. Sorry, sorry. Keep going yourself. Try to finish it up. I don't know why I give myself that many things. Actually, some of you guys might be able to do it one more step. Let's see. Well, we'll take two steps. Just be careful. So like you said, go ahead now. You can tell me. So you put hours down here, and up here is going to go. Minutes. Minutes. What day is canceled there? So 60 minutes in an hour. That's crazy, Jeff. And of course, then you want to put minutes down there. 60 seconds in a minute. So how many seconds in an hour then? 60 times 60. Yeah, 3,600. So you could do that in one step. If you remember, there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. So what the shit does this mean, Jeff? Yay, you drew a bunch of things and put numbers. Good job, Jeff. But now... The reason this one's kind of an easy one is because I divide by anything on the bottom. Well, they're all ones and I multiply anything on the top. Okay, so all I gotta do is throw all these numbers and multiply them in the old calculator. So 31,536,000. Do it again, sir. 31,536,000. Yeah, three, six, seven, yeah, I like it. And my, this that I happen to know would be 314,000,000. Would you say that's a pretty decent approximation, Mike? Because and it's actually not zeros, but you know what I mean. It's, it's approximately three one four zero 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 uh, zero. I think yeah, three six, maybe one less. Three six seven. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are with me at all. Is it important for you to know this? No, I just I just like it. It's kind of cool. It's a little thing that I happen to know. 
It's pretty close, right? 314 instead of 315. Okay, I could do that. Okay. Is everybody semi We're going to do more problems like this. But is everybody semi okay with this? The beautiful thing about this method is you don't worry about the numbers first. You just worry about getting rid of the old unit. Go ahead, Nancy. Which one's the old unit? The one on the bottom? No, no, no. The one on so the I bottom. start at years. Okay. That's why we put a year down there. So I kill the year. I don't want to be in years. I want to go to days. Then I don't want to be in days. I want to go to hours. Then I don't want to be hours, right? Okay. So if there was a unit on the bottom I didn't want anymore, I would put it up top here so it would cancel. We'll see a problem like that in a minute. Okay. So now, now, so that was just a side work, right? That was side work. Now I can do the actual problem. I'm going to erase all this down here. So now I can do this. Distance equals rate. Times time. Do you see how the seconds are going to cancel out, right? Bam, bam. So I will end up with a distance. And then, you know, whatever the hell that is. So nine, four, six, zero, eight. Is that right? Uh, you guys can do it in the calculator. Nine, four, nine, four, what is the number under the kilometer, under KM? Is that an eight? No, that's a second. Second, okay. Right, it's kilometers per second times seconds. So that's why it makes sense. I end up with kilometers. Double check this number, I don't know. Oh, oh of course, Jeff, I left off a bunch of zeros. Zero, 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 zero. I think that's right. So your calculator, what is your calculator saying? It probably doesn't say this, does it? Yeah, mine says, mine says the answer. Yours says all this? Yeah. Interesting. Anybody else get like 9.4608? With, with either like an E or some other number down at the end? E what three six nine E twelve maybe. All right, let me show you. Mine says he's twelve. All right. All right, let's talk about a couple things. Let me show you that happening. So let me pull up. I got a calculator on my computer. It takes it a minute to wake up. Hold on. There you are. So let me show this to you happening. Right, this is a TI calculator, but the Output will be very similar to a scientific calculator. Eh, it might be a little different. Let's see. So you guys see my calculator? So I got 300,000 times 315. Oh, shit, here. 31536. Zero, zero, zero. Okay. And then when I do that, yeah, so it gives me 9.4608 E12. This is times 10 to the 12th. And, and I brought this up earlier. Scientific notation. All Does anybody know basically what that means, that 12? It tells me something about the decimal. Is there zeros? Sort of. Um, it's how many times I would move the decimal. So I'd move it 12 times. One, two, three, four. And then there's going to be eight zeros. Because that would be eight more times I got to move it. Does that make sense? Times 10 to the 12th means take the decimal and move it 12 times to make the number bigger. Why does that make sense? What happens when you multiply something by 10? What happens to the decimal place? It moves over once. So what if I multiply by 
10 squared, two tens, so it'll move over twice. So here I'm multiplying by 12 tens, so it's gonna move over 12 times. So scientific notation is not a huge deal. That's all that the exponent means is move the decimal that many times. You guys all right out there? Okay, okay. So that's the answer. It's, it's this many, did I put the units on there? No, because I suck. This many er, kilometers is one light year. And the closest star is Alpha Centauri and it's like four point something light years. So it's four times this far away. Holy shit. A little, a little far away. Okay, okay, okay. So that, that don't freak out. We there was one problem we just did, and why did it take us so long? Because there were so many parts in it to discuss. So now we're going to come back for the rest of this chapter, and we're going to kind of break down all those parts that we just did: the unit analysis, conversions, all this kind of stuff. Right? Let's right now. Let's take a break. What do you guys think? Want to take a break? Uh, let's take a 15 minute break. Um, okay with that plan. <laughs> Ian says, I concur. Uh, so come back uh, right before 1030. Come back at 1026, roughly. Okay, and let me know if you have any questions right now. I can, I can help. Let's talk about um, fractions for a little bit because that's obviously gonna be a big part of this. When you make ratios, you're dealing with fractions. Um, so it's kind of a little excuse for me to just go over some basics of fractions. Um, so for example, uh, you know, let's start off really nice. What's one fourth plus uh, two fourths? Three fourths. Holy shit. And, and the thing about like denominators is it's like terms. That's all it is. Do you guys know like terms? Can you add x plus 2x? 3x. 3x. I love it, right? Uh, but can you add x plus 2y? No. Hell no. Don't tell me it's 2xy because you ain't adding no more. You're multiplying. What the hell? Okay, okay, I know, I know. This is very basic. I know. Uh, but it's kind of amazing to me. Do you guys see how these are the same thing? One of these plus two of these is three of these. Same damn thing. So that's why we need like denominators. So if I had something like, um, what do you got, Jeff? Two twenty sevenths minus. Um, what do you got, dude? Four ninths, sure. Right, of course, how would you do this? Oh, somebody came back. Divide the bottom ones by three or nine. How do you mean, why, what do you mean divide them? So the nine's a one and the 27's a three. Okay, do you mean, do you mean- Oh, no, multiply the other way so that they're both the same. Right. Yes, there you go. Yes, it's I think been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> we are I, I'm with you. If Sorry. it was like two twenty sevenths times nine fourths, then you could kind of like reduce, right? So we're going to do a problem like that in a minute. Stay on. So here, what does this dude need? Of course, he's missing something, right? What he needs? Multiply both by twenty-seven. No. <laughs> Right, you could multiply this guy by nine and this guy by 27, right? But why would you want to do that? You're making your number so big. You try to do the least you have to do. So your numbers don't get crazy big, right? Um, so there are more common, common denominators, but this is the lowest common denominator, right? That's what least common denominator means, right? You can't say that without sounding drunk. Of course, I could just be drunk. You never know. Um, so as is 2 27ths minus 12 27ths is remarkably enough. What? What's 2 minus 12? 
10. What kind of 10? Negative. Yes. Can you reduce this? No. Um, nope. There's no parts of 10 go into 27. I like it. Okay, okay. And again, this should be pretty basic, but I don't think enough teachers explain the idea that LCD denominators must be the same because it's exactly like terms. Two of these minus four of those. I can't do that, but I could do two of these minus 12 of these. I could do that all day long. That's why I need common denominators. Oh, I said it right. Um, okay, so now watch this. Here's something really kind of cool. Uh, you guys are not going to agree with me. You'll see 748 uh, plus, what do you got, Chuck? Um, let's do, oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, sure. Let's do something really gross. Yeah, it looks, sound nice. 11 over 72. I love it. You would, Jeff. Is that really what that is? Yeah, it is. Okay, I like it. Okay, so there's a few things I want to point out here. What what sucks about this problem compared to the problem we just did? This problem is worse, right? You guys agree? This problem is worse than the 27 and the nine? Why? It's, it's bigger? Yeah, the numbers are bigger. There's more parts to them. Holy shit. Um, so let me see. Let me, I'm going to do this Probably, maybe the wrong way. I'm going to get you guys to help me, and then I'll show you how to make sure you do it the right way. Um, oh, let's see if I can. Well, let's let's do this the right way. All right. Here's something kind of neat. Let me see. How far apart are 48 and 72? How far apart are they? Like 24. 24. Now, what does that have to do with anything, right? You guys are like, okay, what does that have to do with anything, Jeff? What the shit? Well, watch this. Watch this. Multiples of three are all three apart. Ooh, right? Multiples of seven are all seven apart. So what might go into both of these numbers is 24. Does 24 go into 48? Yes. So I want you to realize it must also go into 72 then because that's 24 up from 48. Are you guys at all? I'm giving some of you headaches, I know. Always have that Talon already, unless you like Advil. Um, I really want this to make sense because this is like little things about numbers that we don't think about. Um, so what is 48? It's 24 times two. What's 72? It's one more 24, so it's 24 times. This is two 24s. One more 24, so this is 24 times three. And you can double check that on the calculator, that's fine. I really want it to make sense how I'm looking at these numbers. So now I can see, what do both of these have in common? They both have 24s. So what is this guy missing that this guy has? What is he missing that he has? An extra 24? No, they both have 24. He has a two and he has a three and they both have a 24. So what is he missing that he's got? What does he have? He has a 24 and a three. He has a 24 and a two. So what is he oh, well, missing? A bigger number or well? Huh. I'm not sure how to think. You guys agree with me? They both have a 24, right? So nobody needs a 24 because they both have a 24. He's got a two and he's got a three. So isn't he missing a three? Doesn't the other guy have a three? And he doesn't, so he needs a three. What is he missing that he's got? A two. A two. Don't they both have the same shit on the bottom now? Yeah. So the idea, if you have a fraction with the bottom that's kind of bigger than you wish it was, you break it up into the biggest number they both have times whatever else. That whatever else is what the other dude's missing. So I always have in my mind, does anyone have kids? Do you have more than one kid? So if you have more than one kid, right? And even if you don't have kids, you were a kid before. You might have had brothers. 
you give them both like ice cream and they're like, and, the, and they both have one scoop of ice cream. And then the one kid says, she's got more sprinkles. Ah. <laughs> so you give them more sprinkles and then she's got more sprinkles. So, and then I just end up eating all the ice cream and this is why it's better I don't have kids. Um, so this kid, he got, this one got a three and this one didn't. So he's like, let me get, okay, you get a three. He got a two, okay, you get a two. Now everybody's the same. Everybody is hopefully happy, right? Does that make sense? I don't know. I just like bringing ice cream in whenever I can. So what do I have here? What is this? This will be 21 over whatever the hell that is. What is that? Six times that is 144 plus 22 over 144. That's neat. You guys with me? Do you see how the bottoms are the same now? Of course they are. That's such a cool thing. I don't think enough people see that. This idea, it's, it's all about giving one what the other one's missing and maybe they're both missing something. If you give everybody what they're missing compared to everybody else, they're all the same. And then I can just do this easy. Done. Okay, maybe, maybe, because 43 is prime, so I can't do anything with that. All right. Real quick, I wanna, I don't know if I said anything about this, We've only had two classes, so I, and I can't remember what I said. So that's too bad for everybody. Um, oh, 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 before I forget, I did put a, let me show you. I did put a handout up in Canvas this morning that goes over this. You don't have to look at this. It's just up here in case you want to. Uh, if you try some of the practice problems out, you can ask me about them. But if you go to unit two, fraction basics. Oh shit, <laughs> you can't see this yet. Good job, Jeff. Now you can see it, bam. <laughs> All right, fraction basics. So now it should show up on Canvas. And I give you an example, uh, uh, like what, up here, like what we just did, right? Bam, 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 bam. And on the other side, there's some more stuff. I'm not gonna talk too much about mixed numbers, right now, but that's up here. So if you forgot about mixed numbers, and then of course is reducing fractions and multiplying fractions, which you're gonna do right now. Okay, so that's up there if you want it. That's not an assignment or anything. It's just up there if you want it. Okay, all right, I like it. Maybe, maybe. All right, so here, you guys, before I even get into multiplying, you guys try this one. Uh, let's see. What you got, buddy? Uh, sure. Uh, let's see. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Nothing too crazy. All right, so not too evil, I don't think. So just remember, if somebody asked me how the quiz is gonna work, we'll talk about that when we get this done. Don't let me forget.
So I'm going to catch up to you guys. These are three apart. So the only number that could possibly go into both is three. So that is three times eight, and that is three times seven. Now I see what they both already have. There's their ice cream. And there's the kind of sprinkles and other stuff, right? So this kid got sprinkles and this kid got fudge. And they're like, I want fudge, I want sprinkles. Okay. So what do I need to give this first dude? A seven. A seven. And of course, this guy needs an eight. An eight. And now they both have three times seven times eight. So I get 35 over whatever the hell that is, 168. Is that right? Yes. And then 88 over 168. And then I think that is 123 over 168. Oh, this is really cool. I didn't do this on purpose. But this is going to go right into what I wanted to talk about next. Can anyone tell if that's reducible? Is everybody cool with what I did here? Is everybody, first off, anybody not cool with what just happened? It is. Yeah, it is reducible. Here's a really cool thing. Does anyone know the quick way to tell if a number is divisible by three? Yeah. Add them up. Three, I think. Yeah. Add them up. One plus two plus three is six. That's divisible by three. One plus six is seven plus eight is 15. That's divisible by three. So both numbers are divisible by three. So if all the digits and an any number, if you add them up and get something divisible by three, the whole number is divisible by three. It's just a neat happenstance of how we set up our number system. So you can divide both by three. Oh, what's that gonna be, smart boy? I think it's that, is that right? That's right. Thank you. Now, real quick, real quick. <laughs> You're gonna get used to this maybe, how I work, but we have a problem, it has an interesting thing, which leads to another interesting thing. So here's the other interesting thing. How do you tell if a number is divisible by four? Does anyone know? How can I look at a number and tell that it's divisible by four? Does anyone know? So this number right here, is divisible by four. How do I know? Because the last two numbers are. Why does that, why does that work? So any number you see in the universe, if the last two digits make a number that's divisible by four, 24 is divisible by four, the whole damn thing is divisible by four. Why does that work? Because four goes into 100. So then four goes into 104, 108. So four goes into 200, so four goes into 212. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying, but that's the rule. Has anyone ever heard that before? Do you wish you had known that before in your, earlier in your life? Are I'd... you a little bit upset that nobody told you? All right. A five is easy. You all know five, right? It ends in a five or zero, whoop de do. I skipped two, but two is it's even, right? We all know that. What about six? How can you tell if six goes into a number? What is what is six? Six is two times three. What did, what did a number have to do for two to go into it? It had to be even. What about for three to go into it? All the digits have to add to a multiple of three. So if it does both of those, if all the digits add to a multiple of three and it's an even number, then six goes into it. So like, uh, what do you got, Jeff? I don't know, Jeff. Uh, you can do it, buddy. Can you? Look at you, you're going. So 144, sure. 144, that's five plus four is nine. So three goes in and it's even. So two goes in. So therefore two and three go in. So six goes in. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's enough, that's enough. 
Um, the only number that there's no rule for is seven. Seven is the only number that there's no rule for, right? Okay. No idea how you guys felt about that. Just a couple of you guys, I know, enjoyed that. All right. So coming back to this. Uh, oh, so the fractions thing is there. If you want to look at it, if you need it, you can ask me questions from it. It's not an assignment. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is these two words. Per and of. So if something cost uh, $4 per uh, three liters, how would I represent that mathematically? How could I write that just numerically? What would it look like? Do it do four times three is 12? What does per mean? So four over three? Yeah, so four bucks per three liters. I like it. So per means divide. All right, we, we, hopefully everybody knows that. Uh, what the hell is of me? Equal? No. So now watch this, watch this. If, if there were 90 people somewhere and one third of them uh, liked to play tennis, how many of them like tennis? So it's still divide? No, I know why you said that, but I wouldn't divide 90 by one third. That would be 270. Of means multiply. One third of 90 is one third times 90. Why do you say divide? Because the three's on the bottom, but I am multiplying. And this is a, something that people used to just come into college knowing. And for some reason, I've noticed over the years, fewer and fewer people know what of means. Of means multiply, period. So this would be 30 people. So how would I do this? Um, how would I do 22% of 80? So there's a couple of levels to this. Oh shit, let's see if everybody remembers what this number is. Is, is this a number? It's a decimal, it's 0.22. There you go. I make it into a number by converting it into the decimal that this percentage represents. Humans, now humans made every damn thing up, to be honest. But this is especially made up. Percentages are just stuff we used to make it easier to talk about. I don't want to talk about 0.005. I want to talk about half a percent. That's just easier to think about. So I need to make this into a number, 0.22. You always move the decimal back twice to go from percent to decimal. Does everybody, do you guys, does that sound familiar? And then, of course, of means multiply, 8. And then you would just multiply that out. What's that going to be? 17.6, sorry? No one's going to help yeah. me? All right, thank you. All right, I like it. Does this sound familiar? If you have a question about something, let me know. I'm kind of throwing this out there because this could show up at some point. I want you to remember how this stuff works. So per sets up a ratio of, it means multiply two things. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, so that's that. That's one little tiny skill all by its own. So let me show you this, I think, yeah. Um, he, yeah, let's do that. Is this where it is? Where are you? Oh, it is after this. Okay, maybe we can do that. Okay. Sorry, guys.
All right, all right. Comes after all that. Okay. So let's do this. So if I said um, it cost uh, uh, 4.8 euros per three liters. And I buy uh, seven liters. How much will I have to pay? You can do it, Jeff. So you guys might realize this is going back to that very first equation we did, the dirt equation. This is a rate, right? If I buy six liters, now why is this easier to do? If I buy six liters, how much will I have to pay? Can somebody tell me? Two. Nine, six. 9.6, yeah, 960, 9.6 euros, right? If I double this, I double this. That's the idea of the ratio, right? I'm buying seven liters, so I can't use that trick. If I was buying six liters, that would be an easy question to answer. How do I do this problem? How do I figure out how much money I owe? So amount equals rate times, in this case, Time is not really the thing. In this case, it's going to be rate uh, times number of liters. But if I have a, it costs 4.8 euros per three liters. And I want to know what if I buy seven liters? So it's 4.8 euros per three liters times seven liters. Now, why does that make sense? because it's a rate times uh, an amount, right? And look what happens to the units. Don't the liters cancel? That is called unit analysis, which means don't just blindly throw numbers together and go, oh, there's four operations. If I pick one, I got a 25% chance of being right. No. Make sure what you do actually makes the units make sense. It's gotta be an amount of money. So now if I do this, I think I get 11.2, is that right? Yeah. Two. So I cost 11.2 euros. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. So this is a lot like the conversion we did, right? This is very much like a conversion. This basically is a conversion. I'm converting liters to euros. Okay. So uh, let's do this. I'm gonna rearrange the way the book does stuff because I don't like it. So let me do this next. Let me ask you a pretty straightforward question. Um, 34 inches, how would you turn that into feet? Uh, however many times 12 goes into 34. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one way you could do it. So here's the thing about what, uh, I think that was Ian, right? Um, what you just said, most conversions are all about, do I multiply or do I divide? If you think about it, you'll see what I mean, right? This would have been easier if I would have said 36 inches. Since a foot is 12 inches, 36 inches would have been three feet, right? Mm -hmm. So in that case, I kind of know intuitively that I have to divide. So, but what I can do is do like we did earlier, 34 inches. What unit do I not want there anymore? Inches and I want to go to feet, 
right? So this would make the inches die. One foot is 12 inches, so I divide. So some of you guys might not have to do this. This, the purpose of this is to make you set up the units correctly and then the math follows. Since the 12 is on the bottom, I divide. If it, if it was on the top, I would have multiplied. So what is that? 2.67? Sorry? 2.83. 2.83? What did I do wrong? Oh, I see what it did wrong. 2.83 forever? Yeah. Okay. I like it. I like it. Now, now. What if I wanted to do this? Um, 34 square inches is how many square feet? Oh, shit. So now what am I, so here I'm talking about length. What type of thing am I talking about here? I'm not talking about uh, length. Volume? No, volume would be three oh, dimensions. Right. So this will be area because area means how do you cover something and you cover something with a bunch of little squares. So area is one, two dimensions. So that's why it's squared units. You with me? So for example, this little, this little thing, if it was three feet by six feet, get out of there, Jeff, three feet by two feet. Is everybody with me? How many little square feet are there? There would be six little square feet, wouldn't there? In fact, what's three feet times two feet? It's six feet squared, right? Foot times foot is foot squared. Are, are you guys... I always like you to see multiple reasons why area has a square unit. But this, I can't do the same thing we just did. We Up here, it was 34 inches, uh, 12 inches, and a foot. Why doesn't that work here? Because if I just do this, I really, now stay with me, watch, watch. If I just do this, do I kill all of these units? How many inches are here? Inch times inch. So how many, I just cancel one of them. So don't I have to do this twice? I really want that to just make sense. Why did I only have to do it once up here? Because I just had to kill one inch, inch to the first power. Now I have to do an inch and another inch and those together kill both of those inches. I really, so guess what's gonna happen for volume if I have a cubic inch? I'd have to do this three times. Ooh. So now I can fill it in 12 inches and a foot, 12 inches and a foot. So now I got to take 34 divided by 12, divided by 12 again. And that I definitely, I don't have a clue what the hell that is. Uh, 2.236 and then one repeats. 0.23. Six? Yeah, one, and the one is repetitive. Neato, all right. All right, I like it. So like I just said, if I do step it up to volume, oh, that's pathetic. <laughs> Jeff. I can't let myself go. I'm not an artist, but I know I can do better than that. Yay, Jeff. All right. So if I do, if I do this, all right, I don't know if that really helps you out at all. But you see how the bottom layer is like this guy? I'm a horrible artist, so I apologize right off the bat but I just took this and put it on the bottom and took another one of these and stacked them on top, like ice cube trays, right? So the bottom one is, is, is six, and then I got two of them. So that's why you multiply by the height. So this would be three. This is a big ass. These are gigantic ice cubes. So just get off my back. So three feet, two feet, and this will be two feet, right? Do you guys see, because there's two of these stacked up. All right, I don't know if you guys are with me at all. 
So it'll be two feet times three feet doubled because there's two layers. So it's length times width times height. And that's why it's foot, 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 cubic feet. Exciting. All right. But the idea is, it's kind of nice. I think we all get this basic idea, the conversion step. You destroy the variable. If you have it to a certain power, you have to do it that many times to fully kill it. So if I have the third power, I got to do it three times. Okay. Otherwise, I get inch foot, which is really, really, really weird. I need uh, 72 inch feet of carpet. Who, who the hell are you? What? All right. All right. So that's area, volume, just how to convert those. Now it gets really exciting. So let me show you this. This is where this comes in. I want to do an example of a unit on the bottom. I'll do that here in a minute. Where are you? Uh, get out of here. Come on. Sorry, guys. I forgot what page this bad boy is on. Is it in the next section? All right, maybe it's in the next section. Urgh. So in the book, there is a rather large table of conversions. Uh, it might be earlier, let's see. Nope, maybe it is the next section. Okay, okay, maybe it is. Did I write that down? Oh, no, I didn't, okay. So it might be the next second. Let's take a look at this homework, just so you can see what it's going to look like. And then we'll get a little bit into the next section. And then we'll probably call it a day a little early. So I can go see what's happening with the craziness in DC. Um, all right. So here we go. Let me share this. Yeah, so obviously, has anybody ever, you know, back in the days, do you guys remember the days that we were allowed to leave the country and go to other countries? Has anyone ever gone to another country and exchanged money? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and what's interesting to me, I went to, I think it was Peru, yeah. And there were people just on the street that would exchange money. And... Uh, Thankfully, I was with my girlfriend at the time, and she kind of knew how things worked. And you can get really good rates with some of the people, but some of the other people. So anyway, she knew the right people to go to. Anyway. Excuse um, me, Professor. Just a question that has nothing to do. Did you eat cooey? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I ate a lot because <laughs> her mom was a, was a remarkable cook. So I missed that. But oh, my God, I ate a lot. Um, let me see. So let's look at some of the homework here, just so you guys see what it's going to look like. Here we go. So it starts off with just basic uh, fraction stuff, like we went over some decimal stuff too. Real quick, just to make sure everybody's with me on this. Do you know how to make like 16D? Do you know how to make that into a fraction? 16D? No. Let's start with uh, B. 0.45. So let me come up back on the board here real quick. Bam. Um, something like 0.45. What is that as a, as a fraction? Decimals are fractions whose denominators fit into our number system. What is our number system based on? 10. Why is it 10? I, I just, I don't know. I can't figure it out for the life of me. Um, so if we had eight fingers, let me not take the thumb away or else we don't evolve. If we had eight fingers, our number system would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Eight would be like what 10 is. I don't want to freak you out. 
Anyway, sorry. Um, so all I'm trying to say is, this is a fraction that just happened to fit into our number system. So, so bear with me for a second here. One, and you're like, that's all we do, Jeff, is bear with you. All right, thanks so much. What place is this in? This one, what place is it in? The ones place. N no. First. N no. So for example, this three is in the tens place. So let's try this again. What place is the one in? Does everybody see the decimal? Thousand. 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 Sorry. You guys have me a little worried. Then hundreds, then tens. Do you see how I keep dividing by 10? A thousand divided by 10 is a hundred. A hundred divided by 10 is 10. 10 divided by 10 is one. So what place is this in? Thousand divided by 10 is a hundred divided by 10 is 10 divided by 10 is one. Mm -hmm. Tenths. Tenths, exactly. And you have to sound like you have a lisp. I've got a lisp. What an evil word to give that. So what would this be? Hundredths. Hundredths, exactly, dude. Which really means it's the, this would be five over 10. This would be six over a hundred. So what number is this? What, what number is the, the last digit is in the what place? 45 over 100. Kick ass, there you go. Let me overanalyze this for a minute. Um, is everybody cool with this? I mean, this, is, this should come back to you pretty quickly, but this is why our number system where it's just divide by 10 each time we go down, because that's when the speedometer rolls over. Once this rolls over to 10, nine, and then I got one ten and zero ones, and then it keeps going. And that's why they work the way they do. Thank you so much. Go away. I want to show you something kind of, maybe it's interesting. 0.4 would be four tenths, right? 0.05 would be five hundredths. Is that cool? Can I, and so if I add these together, I should get point, what 0.45 is. Can I add these two things? Can I add four tenths and five hundredths? No. What do I have to do? You have to make them uh, have similar denominators. So I make them both a hundred is equal. So 40 hundredths plus five hundredths is 45 hundredths. All right, I like that. Just to show you why I only have to worry about the last digit that tells me what to put on the bottom because this is how it would all come back together. Just in case somebody's like, I don't know why we don't worry about that. Well, because this. So, how would I write this as a fraction? There's a really nice shortcut I'll show you. I know two's up there. Over 10,000? Yeah, and the nice thing, now watch what you can do. See how there's one, two places, one, two decimal places, and two zeros. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, thank you, number system. Okay, maybe. And again, I know if somebody's out there like, I know all this shit, this is all shit. That's great. That's fantastic. You just enjoy it, right? Fractions and percentages and decimals kind of like lingering problems for us throughout all of mathematics. So I just want to address some things right away. Uh, let me think. What else was there I wanted to show you? Oh, do I want to show you that? Yeah, because it's so cool. All right. I don't know if you guys are going to mutiny on me. Let's find out. All right, I'm going to show you something kind of cool related to fractions and decimals. Um, how do I say? Oh, so if I have one uh, fifth, can somebody tell me how to convert that into a decimal? Why is it not as easy as it could be? That's a weird way to say it. Like, like one tenth would be easy. Why would one tenth be easy? Because it's got a place. There's a place for it. All right. One fifth, shit. So what could I make it instead? What would the bottom, what would be a better bottom? 
don't know if you guys are with me. Uh, still 10. So make it into a 10. So I multiply by two, multiply by two. So that's two tenths, point two. Bam. What's another way to do this? Five into one. Right? That'd be two, 10, zero, point two. Okay. I don't know why I gave it two places, but two guys. All right, so what's this got to do with anything, Jeff? Oh, I wish I knew. So, so what about one ninth? Is this the way? No, I want to do it the other way. That's right. I want to do it the other way. So what about if I, here we go, Jeff. Good job, buddy. What if I wanted to write this as a fraction? Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Somebody has might be like, well, it's one ninth. Well, stop. Kind of do this backwards. What if I want to write this as a fraction? Why is this difficult? This would be easy because 0.2 is in the tenths place. What's wrong? Does, is there ever a last number here? What does that bar, of course, mean? It just means it keeps going forever. So is there a last number? No. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. What do I call something when I don't know what it is? In algebra, I call it x. Stay with me, stay with me. Right? I don't know what this looks like as a fraction, so let me call that x. All right, let's see. Now watch this. What do I get if I multiply it by 10? What if I what do I get when I do 10 times this? What happens to the decimal? It just moves over one. Is that cool? Ten x minus x is nine x. One point one forever minus point one forever is one. So then I get one ninth. So if you do one divided by nine in your calculator, you get point one 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 one. So if one ninth is point one 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 forever, what's two ninths? If one ninth is point one 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 one. Two ninth is point. And then three ninths is point. And why does this make sense? Because what is three ninths? Isn't it one third? And don't you guys mostly know one third is point three 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 forever? All right, thank you. That, that makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> I was hoping somebody would go, oh, this is kind of neat. That's kind of neat, Jeff. So what can you do that with any decimal that has a repeating part to it. So if it was 0.272727, you could actually do this. You'd have to multiply by 100, but it would still work. You can figure out what that fraction is. Okay, sorry. That was a little bit of a diversion, not a fallacy, just a norm, a, a little detour. Okay. Let me get rid of this. Now I got to make fallacy jokes. Great. Okay. All right. Coming back to what we need to talk about. Let me see. Oh, let's go back to the homework. Let's see what's going on with this. The nice thing is I kind of built in some time. Like we got today and tomorrow to finish chapter two, which is good because I knew I was going to interject a lot of stuff on the side. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, what else we have going on here? So there's going to be some area and volume calculations. So I like this problem. Uh, I can't remember if I assigned this. You don't have to be able to draw this out. But look at the very first question. Find the area of the floor. So you have a pod with a floor that measures 20 foot by 12 foot. And then, of course, there's uh, it, it's eight foot tall, the room, right? The, the pod. Um, so what's the only things that matter for the area of the floor? How big is the floor? What are the dimensions of the floor? Twenty by twelve. Twenty by twelve. So if, to find the area of the floor, you just multiply those, right? Length times width. And then to find the volume, you just multiply that by the height. So bring in the third dimension. So you don't necessarily have to draw these if you're really 
even worse artist than I am. Um, drawing them might not be a bad idea. Um, okay, so you have your basic geometry formulas. The area is length times width for a, a rectangle, for a rectangular solid, the volume is length times width times height. Okay. Um, then you're gonna have some stuff here um, uh, with the idea of the per thing, um, creating ratios based on what they give you. So this one's just about finding the units. And this is kind of silly. Uh, like number 27 is your average speed on a bike. If you divide distance in miles by time in hours, that would be miles per hour, Ooh. right? So they just want you to write it as unit per unit, right? Okay, not too bad. Uh, let's see. Oh, these are always kind of interesting where they show you something that somebody did wrong and you have to hide, you have to figure out where they went wrong. Right, those are these kind of problems. Can you figure out what the student did wrong uh, if they did something wrong? And then you got straight up conversions here. These are all things you should know, obviously, hopefully. If you forgot about yards, you know, how many feet in a yard? Anybody? How many feet? Uh, three. Three feet in a yard, I like it. You can always Google it too if you forgot. Um, if you forgot, don't tell me. Let me see. Okay. And then you got stuff like what we did four years to hours, right? That's even easier than what we did. We went all the way to seconds because we're crazy. And then you got these problems like I showed you earlier. They give you something that's going to be in... Um, uh, area or volume, and they got to convert it to something else, right? So the funny thing is, look at number 54. So you could do 20 times 12 and then convert that to square feet, but what would be a little bit easier possibly is if you first convert both of these to feet to start with, right, before you do anything. But either way is going to work mathematically. Math didn't care. Um, okay. Okay. So that's not too bad. A little bit of a preview. What time is it? Yeah, yeah, I don't mind if we get a little bit early. Here's what I was trying to find earlier. Look at this bad boy. All right. Is this official? Yeah, this is 2B. Look at this. All right. I'm not going to make you memorize basically any of these. And there's several of these that are freaky as shit. Does anyone ever watch something like uh, Game of Thrones or some other like medieval stuff? Have you ever heard of Dram? Somebody's like, take six drams of this and call me in the morning if you're still alive. Oh, okay. So a dram is three scruples, come to find out. And a scruple is 20. So scruple is a thing. Has anyone ever heard of somebody, somebody's got, he's got no scruples? I have no idea. I don't think there's a connection there. I really don't. There might be. And then there's something called a penny weights, not a penny wise. So don't freak out if you don't like clowns. Um, anyway, anyway. It, here's the, what's funny. Let me, let me show you a problem that I love to give as a, I don't know why I'm showing you this, but I love to give this kind of problem as a bonus question. So it almost doesn't matter if we know the units or not. It doesn't matter where shit. So what if I say seven gleeks is 11 uh, Barnums and uh, 51 uh, door hams. I have no idea. Don't even ask me. Uh, 51 door hams is three barms. Make it four barms. <laughs> Just because. And I say, okay, 16.2 uh, gleeks equals how many door hams? I like the idea of a door ham. That's awesome. Walk through, take a bite. It's almost as good as rum ham. All right. Is anybody freaking out about the words up here? The words don't matter. The words do not matter. So I'm in Gleeks right now, right? So I write down where I start. I'm starting in Gleeks. 
Now, where can I go from Gleeks? Can I go from Gleek straight to door hams? No, we have to go to Barnum's. Yes, that's my path from G to B to D. Barn Barnum's are the middle unit, right? The middleman. So I'm gonna go from Gleeks. And of course, Gleek is the name of the monkey from the Justice League from a long time ago. But I wanna go from Gleeks to, I forgot already, Barnum's. Right, and, and it doesn't, these are freaky shit. What the shit, Jeff? What is this? Are you okay, Jeff? Did, was there medicine you forgot this morning? This doesn't matter. I wanna kill Gleeks. I don't want them there anymore. So of course I put them down here. What are they? I don't care. And then what do I put here for the numbers? Seven Gleeks is 11 farms. Bam, you put the units where they kill what you don't want and then you put the numbers next to the appropriate unit. And then I don't want to have Barnum's. Oh, so I'm going to put Barnum down here. And I can go from Barnum's to Dorham's. So four Barnum's, 51 Dorham's. So then the Barnum's going. Now, how does this work? 16.2 times 11 divided by seven times 51 divided by four. It's exactly how you can put it in the calculator. You can put it all in at once. And let's all see. I'm desperately curious what this is, just in case. 2021 brings aliens, you never know. Can you say that order one more time? So anything on the top, you times. Anything on the bottom, you divide, that, that's it. So you can actually do 16.2 times 11 times 51 divided by seven divided by four. Got it. I like it. Did I do that? Let's see. Hmm. These are helping a lot. You know what I'm doing also? I'm putting arrows like from 16.2 Gleeks on the left in the left upper column. Sure. And I'm putting an arrow down to the seven. Sure. Yeah. To make Gleeks. sure that they kill okay, I know. That it goes down and then also what you said about top multiply bottom divide yeah Kick ass. very helpful thank you sure so what do you guys get anybody got that it's not a very nice number it's nobody got it oh i still forgot to talk about the quiz did i yes i did all right, we'll do that and then we'll call it a day. So I got 324.5785714. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know how precise these people want to be. You never know. Okay, so. Woo Let's talk about how the quiz is going to work tomorrow and then we'll call it a day. So here's what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, and this is only for tomorrow. I just want this for the first quiz, just to make sure. So this is what's going to happen. Uh, class is going to start. We're going to have any questions people have from homework. We're going to do examples or whatever the hell. As soon as we get through all that, uh, I'm going to activate the quiz in Canvas. You're going to go to Canvas. You do not have to print it out. You just have to do the work. You can print it out if you want to. You're going to do the work. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have a certain, it's going to be a timed quiz, right? So you know exactly how much time you have to, to work on it. When you get done, you scan it like you do with homework and you submit it. Um, stay with me now. So tomorrow, before we start the quiz, I'll show you in Canvas where everything is. So the way it's got to work to make it easier for me is there's going to be a place to go to get the quiz and then there's another place to go to turn it in. Trust me. Otherwise, it sucks on my end to try to keep things straight. So I'll show you exactly where that is in Canvas uh, tomorrow before I unleash you on the quiz. I think after this first quiz, I just want to make sure I'm there if anything weird happens. We'll do quizzes. I'll, uh, the quiz will, will uh, open when class ends, and then it'll be due um, by that evening. So then you can just do it whenever you have time. Um, 
if that doesn't work for anybody, because I was thinking about either always doing the quizzes during class or uh, giving you, like I said, that time after class and then it's due that night. It's still time. So the minute you open it, the, the timer starts and then you have to turn it in before the timer ends. You guys, you guys with me? Um, but it kind of makes it a little more free for people to do it when they have time. Um, okay. And it also doesn't cut from class time. Exactly. That's the other big deal with that too. Where's semester, it would be different. Well, even during the semester, I ended up doing like that because uh, it just takes more time online to get through stuff. Um, so I need all the time I can get. But for this first quiz, I just want to make sure that everybody sees how it works, that there's no technical glitches. So I figured I want to do it while we're in class. You're not going to have to turn your camera on for a quiz. That's fine. Um, but for the midterm and the final, you will. And the midterm and the final will act just like this first quiz, right? They'll be just like this first quiz. They'll be during class time, but you'll have to have your camera on for them. Okay. Any questions about how it's gonna to work tomorrow? So for the quiz, it sounds like the timed part is just the time it takes us to upload it. You're giving us the problem separately. So or once the, it? yeah, once the quiz starts, so tomorrow I'm just gonna have like a, a, a time that you have to turn it in by, right? Just like in class, right? If I give a quiz in class at the beginning of class, say you got 20 minutes, right? Something. Um, so we'll see if a lot of people aren't quite done or you're having technical issues, then I can kind of like extend the time a bit. So that's the nice thing about that. Okay, anything else? All right, I feel like we've earned a an early day. So that's not too bad. So 11.30, that's a little early, but that's all right. Don't get used to it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, you can hang out. Otherwise you are free to go. Uh, and email me if you, oh yeah, Nancy, you want to hang out. Anybody else interested if there's a open session later today? Uh, oh boy. Okay. So what, <laughs> in that case, what time works for uh, most people would like, uh, would 3.30 work? Would 3.30 work if anybody wants to? An open session for tutoring or? Yeah, for a homework session with me. You know, tutoring ends at 3.30 in the Mass Study Center. So then I can start my um, my time at 3.30. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a Zoom meeting. I'll put it up on Canvas, the link. Um, right. And then you just click on it and join just like normal later today if you want to. All right. Okay, I might get on just a few minutes later because I should be getting yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's all good. You can come in. The, so let me make it officially 3.30 to 4.30, okay? Okay, great. So you can come in at 4.20 even and still get some help, right? 4.20. All right. Anything else, guys? Any questions about that or... No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then you can you can leave if you want to, if you don't have any. Questions. And I'll see okay, some of you guys. I, I just remember oh, a question. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, your example about the Gleeks. And um, what is that called? What are we? What is that? It's conversions. What, what it, it's conversions, conversions, but inside of that, it's unit analysis. So you're setting it up. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. conversions. But a part of conversion is unit analysis, which is really just making sure that the units come out the right way. So that whatever okay. operations you do are making the units the way they're, they're canceling the right way and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so is this just for converting a certain thing or for converting no, anything? No, this is for converting anything. Okay, so, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay, yeah. Because yeah, I yeah we did it earlier this morning. Yes. Because uh, I have I remember I have you know all, all my um, notes here. So okay, great. Awesome.
Thank you very much, Professor. You're welcome. And we'll see you at 3.30. Bye, okay. everybody. All right. Uh, thank oh, yeah. you. See you later. Bye. OK. See you. All right, bye. Bye.